right now on the MMA Fight Corner Hotline, we are joined by UFC flyweight Luis the La Samurai Smolka. Aloha, my friend. How are you doing this morning? Um, great. How are you? Great. Now, we really appreciate you joining us so early in the morning because he is actually calling from Hawaii, everybody. So that means it's about 5.30 for Lewis, and he is taking the time out of his day to join us, and we really appreciate that. So uh, coming up for you, Lewis, you have a big, big fight on the horizon against Chris Carriasso, and that's going on May 10th in Cincinnati, Ohio. How awesome of an opportunity is this for you? Um, I am great. I can actually crack the top 10 with this win because he's ranked ninth in the UFC right now. So I'm, I'm really excited for this opportunity. I think this is a really big shot for me. And, you know, one thing I've noticed as of late, the Hawaiians are taking the UFC by storm. You have Russell Doan, Brad Tavares, uh, Max Holloway, Dustin Kimura, Travis Brown, and oh, let me not forget uh, Yancey Medeiros. So, you know, you guys are really, really storming into the UFC, making statements, a lot of you guys. And uh, I think, you know, for the most part, uh, a lot of you got started out at the uh, Pacific Extreme Combat Promotion. Uh, what was it like getting your start up through there? And I believe you were even the flyweight champion there. Um, it was a really good experience. Um, I really enjoyed it because it was like, it was a really, it was a really good way to get used to traveling and cutting weight and stuff. And like, a, it was like a, it's a pretty big promotion. I mean, I know it's not UFC level, but it's like, it gave me a lot of like the, um, I guess like this, this like, um, it gave me a lot of startup. Like, I guess I don't really know how to explain it, but, um, it gave me exposure to a lot of bigger things that like I wouldn't normally get in a smaller promotion and a lot of ways, like, um, how bigger promotions run things like weigh in press conferences. It gave me a lot of exposure to that type of thing. Well, how hard so, was it? I mean, to, I'm sorry. How yeah. hard was it to make that adjustment? I mean, I know it's, it's not, you're saying that they'd prepared you for it, but it's gotta be a completely different monster when you're talking about stepping into the UFC. Yeah, no, it, it is. It, it's, a, it's a completely different experience. I honestly, like, when, when I found out my nerves were shot for, like, until the fight, you know, like, I was freaking out and stuff. But, I mean, I really used to, like, the, um, the time with, um, like, like, going, like, flying around to the Philippines and stuff, like, getting used to, like, time, tra um, like, what is it, like, a time zone difference and mm -hmm. things, like, that really helped. Well, uh, let's talk a little bit about your UFC debut that you had against Alp Us uh, Kilik. That was a, a big fight also because he came in as a highly touted prospect and you defeated him when not a lot of people knew your name in the UFC. What was that feeling like for you? Um, it was a great feeling, to be honest. Yeah, my first um, UFC fight and to win, uh, I... Um, I really felt validated as like um, like a possible like a future champion or like a prospect. You know, I really felt like like I have like a really good shot to you know do something in MMA. You know, make my name known and things. And uh, speaking of getting your name known, you you talk about that fight that you had with Alp, but uh, for the first time in your career, it was the first time you went to a decision. All of your other uh, wins have been finishes. So would you attribute that maybe a little bit to the octagon jitters, the fact that you went the distance, or was it just a credit to his toughness? Man, he was tough. I I, I just I tried to finish him. I honestly did. It just I couldn't do it. I don't know how he survive what he did well, well Heidi brings up uh, octagon jitters and it's been well documented for quite a few people it does happen were there any there for you I mean was it nerve-wracking walking out there the first time um to be honest like the whole week like the whole chat really I was like I was so scared but for some reason on fight night like I just started warming up and shadow boxing and like I felt really, really good, and I was just like, I was just looking at my teammates, and like, I think we got this. Like, I really think I got this. Well, I'm telling you, you did because obviously you know now because you did have the win. But man, you were impressive. I got to say, the way you moved, just it was so fluid. It's just perfect performance. It really was. And I mean, it had to be nice hearing like hearing the commentators talk, just talk you up during that fight. I don't know if you got to hear it or got to watch it, but they were praising you to the heavens. 
Yeah, I know. I heard Kenny Florian and stuff. Um, I I really did appreciate that. I think it's like a testament to my team mostly. You know, I I have a really really good fight team uh, right now. I'm with Gracie Technics and uh, my my boy Charles. Um, this guy, he, his his thing is CKJ 808 striking systems. He's been running all my striking in my camps for a while. So you know, um, with those two those two guys helping me out, you know. It's, it's, then, like, it, it's a real testament to where I've gotten. Are you no longer then with 808 Top Team, or is that the striking coach you were talking about is 808 Top Team? Uh, no, it, we we split from 808 Top Team, actually, recently. Um, it was kind of messy. I, it was a pretty messy situation, but you know how those things go. I mean, when people start to, like, you know, yeah, like, I guess when people start making it big, you know, camps kind of fall apart and things kind of, I never thought it would happen to us, but it did. So if we're at uh, Gracie Technics, then, you have uh, Max Holloway, Dustin Kimura, right? Yeah, um, it's myself, Russell Doan, um, Max Holloway, and Dustin. And uh, we had Yancey Medeiros out there sparring with us for a while. And we also have um, Lowen Tainanez. I'm not sure if you guys know who he is, but he's uh, a King of the Cage champion, and he's been competing at 1FC. Um, we had uh, Reno Remigio and Edward Thomas are a lot of the guys that are training with us. Look out for them to come pretty soon. Well, let, let me ask you a question, Lewis. Uh, and we're joined by Lewis, the last Samurai Smolka. By the way, that's an awesome nickname. But you have to Props say more to Hawaiian that. Yeah. On that. <laughs> 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 Props with that one. But uh, I, what got you to to this sport? What made you want to participate in MMA? And you know what what drive drove you to this type of, of career? Because let's be honest, not everybody can take getting punched in the face for a living. Um, I don't know. I always loved fighting as a kid. Like, I mean, when I was, like, three, it's really, like, I would always my parents to, like, play fight with me and stuff. And, like, I like karate from a really young age. Um, I just, I don't know. I just always, like, just kind of gravitated toward martial arts. I can't really explain it. I just liked it. <laughs> You have a brown belt in Kempo and in Judo, is that right? Yeah. And it, was that also uh, something that you started training at an early age, or did you do that more as you started learning about MMA? Um, I did Judo when I learned about MMA. Um, judo is actually a high school sport out here. Like, how wrestling is a high school sport, we have wrestling and Judo in Hawaii, so that's like a really, really good, it's a really, really good background, you know? Absolutely, it is. It makes you very well rounded. I mean, Phil was kind of touching on this, but was there anything specifically that really drove you to the sport? Um, maybe getting honestly, maybe getting picked on as a kid. But um, I can remember the first time I really decided that I wanted to be a UFC fighter. I was watching on um, the second season of the UFC, Rashad Evans, and um. Uh, Oh, I can't remember who he fought in the finale. Oh. In the finale, it was Brad Imes, I believe. Yeah, Brad Imes. At heavyweight. Brad at Imes. heavyweight. Absolutely. Yeah, at he- yeah. I mean, that was that was I think my the first time I really watched a, like a UFC fight, like an MMA fight, and I, I I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I really really wanted to do it. Wow. I started researching it. I came across like the first season, and I was like, oh wow, this is insane. So so wait a second. So you're you're from Hawaii. And you didn't yeah. know who BJ Penn was before that? Are you telling me that? I honestly didn't. Um, what? Like I knew there were there were fights and stuff in Hawaii, but my parents would never let me go, never let me do anything with it. Like my parents are really protective about that kind of thing. Well, he what? was on the Big Island anyway, so I think you're from uh, Oahu, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of a, a far distance. Or not really oh, like. that's like driving from here to LA. That's nothing. Except for you can't drive. <laughs> you <You're laughs> have to take so, on the boat. So <laughs> yeah, honestly, that is kind of my path. I probably should have known is my parents would not let me around that kind of thing. Well, I because I got to tell you, Lewis, what happened with me? Like I've always, well, I've watched UFC from UFC one. And I mean, for me back then, it was, I'll be honest, it was more of a of a spectacle. You know, you get together with your friends on a Friday night because they were back on Fridays back then. And you drink with your buddies and it was just something to put on TV. But then it was a guy named BJ Penn at UFC. I believe it was 31 or 32 when he fought Cal Uno. 34, I think. I, yeah, yeah, it was an early one. And I mean, I I had not seen him 
before. I know he had made two other appearances, but with me, I had to get him on tape because those were the dark days of MMA for me, and it was really hard to get it back on cable. And when I saw him fight Cal Uno and he beat him down in 11 seconds, bowed to every corner of the arena and then peaced out and BJ Penn has left the building, I was hooked for life. You know, that was actually hooked for life. funny you say that because that was the, the real true first UFC pay-per-view that I saw. That's how come I remember it was definitely UFC 34. Yeah, BJ yeah. Penn. And, and I got to tell you, one of the things that I've always found from BJ Penn is BJ... You know, living the island life, he, he kind of had a tough time training. He'd always get distracted. He kind of liked the paradise life. What about you? Is it, is it, what do you do to relax and get away from the fighting? Uh, um, honestly, I just hang out with my friends. Yeah, like just relax, you know, go to the beach, um, maybe go hiking or something, you know, just kind of. You a surfer? Um, no, I, I used to, and I was little. I don't anymore. Uh, okay. A loss. <laughs> All right, Lewis. Well, one more question for me before we let you go here and maybe go back to sleep. Maybe you're heading to training. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, being undefeated and heading into this fight with Carrie also, do you put any added pressure on yourself to keep that undefeated record? I mean, does it loom over you at all, thinking that, you know, being in the UFC, remaining undefeated is a, a tough thing to do? Um, that's not really where my focus is right now. I don't really put a whole lot of, like, I mean, honestly, can't even believe I'm undefeated. Like, every time I get my hand raised, I'm like, really? I want again? Like, it, it amazes me, but that, that's not really where my focus is right now. My focus is just on winning the next fight and hopefully, you know, becoming um, a champion. Well, great. We'll look forward to seeing you in there. And thank you so much for taking the time to join us. But we do have to head out to our last break here. So thank you again, Lewis, for joining us here on MMA Fight Corner. Uh, thank you guys for having me. It's been awesome. It's been thank an honor. Thank you.